Welcome to the video, everyone. Hey, anyone that is new to see, to this channel, thank you very much for joining, and to all those who have subscribed, thank you very much for coming back to the channel. We have a doozy in for you today. Today, today, today. First thing, I am going to go into the reasons why, or just one reason why I am choosing to bag and hodl Singularity Nets AGI token. Uh, I'm also going to bridge into a little bit into Neuralink. That's right, Elon Musk's uh, Musk, Elon Musk's uh, product, as well as bridge that over into autonomously driven vehicle or driving a car with your mind brain waves. So that being said, let me go ahead and ask this question to everyone. If you could control any car that you wanted with your brain, what car would it be? <laughs> would it be that golf cart that's out there on the golf cart course? Or would you do something like the, the new Mercedes-Benz S-Class that just came out for 2021? Let me know in the comments section as we drive this thing off and get it started. All right, so Singularity Net, um, just so as you know, uh, everyone, this is not uh, financial advice at all. This is just uh, my personal opinions and my views on why I choose to dig into Singularity Net. Uh, please go ahead and do your own research and make sure you invest wisely. Singularity Net actually has put out a number of different things uh, pertaining to the automotive industry, just kind of commenting on it is what they've been doing. It is my speculation that they are working on things behind the scenes. And there is one connection with a company out of China that leads me to believe that. So let's get into the first to lead up to that. Let's build the story. All right. Ben Gortzel did a keynote speech back in 2018 and he had a slide in there. And he's done a couple of, of, uh, of these meetings and keynote speeches where he's talked about this. And this is how automotive industry or autonomously driven cars um, uh, and the issues with them. So here's a direct slide from that. It says, self-driving cars are a great leap forward, but they can't learn to drive different types of vehicles besides cars. You know, they can't drive trucks, boats, and motorcycles. And I want to pause there for a minute just to say, I know some of you out there have seen this before. Those people who are singularity net, you know, gurus, I get it. But keep in mind, as I have mentioned in previous videos, that the automotive industry moves kind of slow and people are slow to get on, to adopt, etc. So this channel is going to be geared uh, obviously towards that particular audience, but also for those of you who may have be interested in Singularity Net, you might get a different twist than what you got before uh, with respects to the importance of Singularity Net. So just go ahead and continue listening in. So yes, that's this slide right here from Ben Gortzel. And um, here's a quick little um, you know video of Ben Gortzel saying the similar thing about uh, self-driving vehicles. Go ahead and listen in. In self-driving cars, you see similar issues. I mean, you train a, self, a software to drive a self-driving car. It can't drive a motorcycle or a truck. It can't get started. It can't transfer its knowledge. And they're also not good yet at recognizing obstacles in the road that differ greatly from their, from their training data. So as you can see there, he's literally going through the thought process that if, it, if it's programmed to drive a car, it can't drive a motorcycle. It doesn't know how to start it, doesn't know how to do anything else with it. It's a whole different level of learning and dynamics. Um, and as you see here, they, he kind of outlines the differences between narrow AI, which is trained or just programmed to only do one thing. And then you have general AI that is uh, educated, meaning it can literally learn to do anything a human can learn. It's able to generalize dramatically beyond its original programming and training data. It'll spend significant resources on generalization rather than strict application of provided functionality. So that is just a slide that they produced and in specific, he mentions self-driving vehicles. Another note, uh, as part of the community for Singularity.net in the AGI chat. For those of you that aren't members here, if you want to go in here, go right ahead. I am one. Um, but you can see here, they, they have this article. How can we feel safer in a fully autonomous vehicle? And they, they go through a number of different things. You can, If you want to join, you can go ahead and read the article. I'm just going to focus on uh, a couple of different things. First, we cannot deny that having numerous and uh, various types of cameras, radar, LIDAR, along with a ton of processing power will help the machine process all the data found around it, which is drastically di different than us humans who rely purely on our senses as input and our memory as GPS, which we all know too well prove unreliable. 
and that is very, very important. And the important part about that is, and I'll scroll up in this article, is that it's this. While AV has a limited, strict, data-driven vision of the world around it, it's not going to drive you around drunk. Okay, it's not going to be swerving and all that other kind of stuff. It's not going to be distracted by text messages from your mobile device. It will constantly be reading the data input from its many sensors and making decisions in a split second. Now, I know many of you might be saying that is immoral. I don't know if I can do that. Let's go back to my question that I asked at the beginning of this video. And that is, hey, if you could mind control any vehicle out there other than Christine, that was spooky. That was scary. Leave Christine out of it. (laughs) <laughs> but if you could mind control any any vehicle out there, what type of vehicle would it be? Now, it does note at the end of this article down here that I've highlighted in blue, it is true that automated vehicles will not take the decisions most of us would take, and some might even question the morality of letting the machine choose what's right for us, as sometimes the right choice may not be the one we are expecting. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, so that might be a little Christine right there for you. So you get the idea that uh, in the community of Singularity Net, they're talking about it, they're writing about it. Here is another thing though, and this is the link that caused me to go, wait a minute, this is a reason why, from an automotive perspective, there are many others of why I'm choosing to bag Singularity Net's AGI, and that is this. In this article, last year when they were getting ready to announce the beta version, uh, a V2 version of their decentralized AI, when they were announcing this in an article, and once again, this is September of 2019, a little over a year ago, it said, this release comes only a few weeks after the announcement of a partnership between Singularity Net Foundation and the People's Insurance Company of China. P-I-C-C. And I know many of you who are in this space, your brains are ringing right now. P-I-C-C. Yes, I get it on how they're related in a number of different areas. But let's slow this thing on down and think automotive. Moving on, which will involve applications of some of the same AI tools featured in beta version 2, along with other Singularity Net AI tools to solve critical problems for P-I-C-C's insurance business across automotive, agricultural, and other verticals so you go okay i can see how that's going to be in there and if this is an insurance company what is associated with the insurance company why is the picc so involved in this and why are they linking up well it's not just from this uh, singularity net foundation side of things let's move over to another article and go backwards in time a little bit to what else the PIC is prepping for. So this article is literally from December of 2017, so about 18 months or so before the one that I just mentioned. Look at this, PICC's partnership with auto repair chain shifts into gear. Catch a little title, see what they did there? So we have here, the PICC linked up with US-based body shop Fixed Autos China arm with a deal announcing during Fixed Autos China's first annual national conference. What's it about? developing a direct repair uh, program with PICC. Our national strategic cooperation agreement with Fixed Auto China includes policy sales, claims, and the future development of the DRP in China. They are literally prepping of this. They're putting links or getting these overall partnerships with automotive industry. In this case, think about this as parts. And then you think about this is an insurance company. Focusing on the direct repair program, what is going to be associated with the with the parts? It's going to be making sure that the right parts go in there when it comes down to repairing the vehicle, any type of fraudulent activities. How do I know this? Well, as I said before, this article is from 2017. Fast forward two years, we come across this article, maybe a year and a half, of SIT Singularity Intelligence. All right, Singularity Intelligence is... Um, Ben Gortzel is the chief scientist also of Singularity Intelligence, and obviously we all know who he is with respect to Singularity Net. Here we go. Read this section here. Singularity Net and SIT signed a strategic cooperation memorandum with PICC's financial services to formally establish a long-term strategic global partnership between the two parties. What's it all about? Well, it's about this. The initial focus is on applications such as... AI-enabled marketing, linguistics, and voice recognition. Now, if you think about this for a second, wait a minute, you're driving along your car. Remember, I just asked the question of, if you could mind control any vehicle, what would it be? 
All right, so AI-enabled marketing, this is an insurance company, linguistics and voice recognition, smart evaluation and settlement of claims, fraudulent claims in the automotive industry as it pertains to VIN numbers, as it pertains to uh, people getting in accidents, whether the right parts were put into the car and then installed properly is a big deal no matter what country you go into. It goes on to read, and the use of blockchain to manage the supply chain in identity fraud. So you have it there, folks, that the Singularity Net is integrated with PICC and is on the back end of this fraudulent activity that has to do with your vehicle. Now, I know that question that I asked at the beginning of the uh, video about what vehicle would you want to drive and all of this, it's, I'm about to get into that. So think about that. So that, as I just went into this, that kind of gives you the reason why I decided to, you know what, this is huge because this is just China. This doesn't include Germany. This doesn't include other parts of Europe, UK, etc. let alone South America and Africa on how Singularity Net on an automotive perspective from the financial services and insurance side are going to be integrated there. But what about the self-driving car in and of itself. Remember, I said that at the beginning of this video, I showed you on how Ben Gorcha was talking about a problem with these self-driving vehicles that they can't learn to adapt, but they could learn from general artificial intelligence or artificial general intelligence, how to kind of learn their environment like a human. So in, so let me go ahead and now introduce, as many of you have heard in the news, interfacing with the human brain, the link. Yes, Neuralink, Elon Musk, everyone knows about him, and this Neuralink, he has been publishing this a lot this year and what it's all about. We are designing the first neural implant that will let you control a computer or mobile device anywhere you go. Now remember, an automobile is literally a large thing that you sit in or that can be controlled by AI. It, that's all it really is. It is a very, very sophisticated machine, but not as sophisticated as some things I know, um, that a human being can sit in or at least control some other way remotely. So, and now imagine the first neural implant. Keep in mind, the neural implant that will let you control a computer or mobile device anywhere you go. And I'm not gonna get into the neural link too much, but that's where I start to let you kind of think about this. If the neural link is able to let you control computers, then would not it uh, would it not let you also control aspects of your vehicle? Would you allow your brain waves and your brain activity uh, from that that is transmitted from this neural implant to go over the air into the wonderful connected city? Just a question to ask. But wait, I'm here to tell you that about a decade ago, when I was investigating and doing some research uh, in remote sensing. Long story, won't get into that. Maybe you'll catch on to it a lot in one of my other future uh, videos. I want to introduce a company to you that many of you may not know, and that is the company Emotive. Emotive is uh, a company that has created these, uh, what they call these Epoch uh, headsets that literally mount onto your brain, as you can see in the picture here. And they, they have a couple different styles. When they first came out, they had a whole bunch of uh, transducers that were attached to the head. I thought I recalled many years ago, about a decade ago, maybe a little less than that, reading that they had 16 sensors. Um, and then later on, I read somewhere that they had had 14 sensors that attached to your brain and it, it monitors your brain waves and they have these whole bunch of games, software development kits, etc. So you can see here, Emotive's mind-powered road safety system slows the car when a driver is distracted. I'm going to get into this and then uh, go ahead and wrap this thing up, all right? Because keep in mind, we started off with Singularity Net, and don't you think that the essence of Singularity Net and them literally being the foundation, the web, so to speak, of all the Internet of Things, of all things that are connected um, in this new uh, AI economy that's going to be coming out, don't you think that something like this, whether it be on the link, the Neuralink side or in the emotive side, would also find their way into the infrastructure? I like to speculate, strong speculation, with a yes. So here, this article, Royal Automotive Club of Western Australia, RAC revealed that 20% of Australian drivers involved in crashes admit they were star staring directly at the object they ended up hitting, but because they were distracted, they did not comprehend what was happening at the time. Repeat, it's what they call, you know, the tunnel vision, or you literally you just get brain locked in there, and you see that deer, you see that cow. Okay, if you see a cow, you probably should be able to get around it because they don't move very fast, but anyway. 
Uh, but because they were distracted, they did not comprehend what was happening. Scrolling down, the so the Epoch, it has a new version. Now, this is a little older article, so uh, just keep that in mind. The new version is fitted with six axis inertial sensors made up of three axle gyroscope and three axis accelerometers. So basically, it's letting you know which way you're going, up, down, all around, how fast you're going, kind of like what your iPhone does, with the exception of this technology approaches it a little differently, by, aka on your head. It can judge head motion, eye movement, eyelid blinking. Its initial use was in teaching users to concentrate on specific tasks at hand. Now, when I was uh, fiddling around with this years ago, it was one of those things where you could kind of use it to move uh, mental blocks on a screen so you could uh, make the block grow, make the block shrink, create squares, all sorts of stuff. It was kind of a cool thing. And it still is. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal tool. Um, and the software de development kits associated with that are great. Um, but hence, Emotive knows a lot about recognizing the focusing on distraction. Uh, you know, so to begin, the automotive had to the emotive had to ensure. So I can read. I can had to measure what daydreaming looks like using the headset. Total 14 sensors. Once again, I thought it originally had 16 sensors in the prototype, um, but anyway. Um, so that kind of gives you the idea with that. One of the strongest points that came out of this study um, says this person, keep in mind, this is from Australia. So everyone that is in Australia, um, let me know if you've actually heard of this down there in um, down there and down under. I would appreciate that. So to wrap this article up, one of the strongest points that came out of this study in Australia, and for anyone that's down in Australia, if you heard about this, go ahead and uh, uh, let me know in the comments or just private message me. Um, is the attention switching is a very good indication of distraction. Attention switching. RAC is hoping that it will do some good by highlighting task switching as an important factor that people can take into account alongside other well-known dangers such as drinking and driving. And, uh, you know, and here's the thing. This is important now because uh, there's a lot of people who have may have lost someone in car crashes, etc., um, you know, so it's, it's a very, very important thing. Nationally, it is estimated, and this is in Australia, it is estimated that inattention, meaning lack of attention, has a factor in 46% of total fatal crashes. And that's one of the things that the Executive General of Manager Advocacy of Member Benefits RAC stated. So there you go. Let me know what you think with respects to the emotive, as well as uh, why you also may consider bagging, hodling, singularity nets, AGI. And do you think that any of this, as it pertains to uh, the greater driving economy, is going to be coming out soon? I personally think that you know it won't be too far off where what we do and how we think are going to be affecting automobiles and other aspects of our everyday life. That's it. Let me know what you think of the video. Do not forget to subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time.